Hi friends and welcome to Starry Hilders Homestead. I've got I've got chickens all over the place today. And I wanted as I'm I'm feeding my my egg layers here, I wanted to do a video addressing something that really seems to be a reoccurrent question to share with you friends finally a little bit of financial advice. And I'm not a financial expert by no means, but we are living off the grid in a self-sustainable uh, lifestyle. We are living a debt-free <laughs> lifestyle. And for the most part, we came from very similar backgrounds to where you friends are today. Uh, I will tell you, I didn't have a credit score. In fact, I probably had a minus credit score when I met my husband. Disastrous. I made all the wrong moves as a, a young adult. So I started off um, in the negative, and it took me a long time to get into the positive. But it can be done. This is what I really want to share. Uh, our journey who are out there who are in debt, who have bad credit, who just can't seem to get out of that hole, and you really want to make a change and obtain a, a homestead and financial freedom like we have. Because it can be done. It can be done. Uh, the biggest thing that we did for ourselves was to take the bull by the horns and become our own advocators. Yeah, our own advocators. Because who has the most vested interest in your financial success? It's really not the financial planner or the stockbroker or even the bank. You know, it's not that they want you not to succeed, but your vested interest lies in yourself and the only person who is going to advocate for you and your financial health is yourself. So what I did is I just started reading and I started researching and I tell you what I learned was unbelievable. All the different um, avenues and the different things that me and Mr. Hilder could apply uh, to our financial uh, to our financial health that would help us. And that that's just wouldn't I'm not just saying just help us, but that would keep us debt free or help us get rid of some debt. Uh, would uh, help our money work for ourselves. We, I learned a lot. And it was very empowering because I really felt like we finally had a handle on our finances and our dream could indeed be obtainable, even with someone like me with bad, bad credit. So, so what's the point story? So the point is today I am going to share some of that information and knowledge that I've learned along the way. And today we're just going to keep it real simple. If you are in the market for a home and you've tried and you're just having every door closed, don't give up hope because there are a couple steps that you can take to secure a loan if you are poor or have bad credit. All right, so get a pen and piece of paper. Let's share some of the top things that is going to help you obtain a homestead like us. And then I wanna talk uh, about when it comes to taking out a loan is we're gonna bypass the banks and we're gonna go right to the federal government and look at FHA loans. These are mortgages that the federal government provides to people who have poor credit scores. 580, pretty low, right? Okay, so if you're you know, bad credit, FHA loans. The other nice perk about an FHA loan is, you know, they take in consideration that you don't have any credit, so you probably don't have a lot for a down payment, right? All you need to do is come up with 3.5% for that down payment. So look it up online. Very, very viable option for those who are really strapped and the bank keeps shutting the door on you. The other... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rooster. The other thing that you friends really need to start looking at, say the FHA loan isn't panning out, you still have to take the bull by the horns and really start being smart financially and preparing yourself for a loan that you may have to obtain at the bank. And how do you do that? Well, you do that by, by a couple things. You try to get rid of as much debt as you can. Pay off as many bills as you can. 
streamline everything. If you've got credit cards, start paying down that debt. You may not be able to increase your credit card score, uh, but the less debt you have going into a, uh, a bank, um, a banking place, <laughs> the better off you're going to be. The other thing is, uh, banks will also look at your renting history. Do you pay your rent on time? Do you, uh, you, know, you know, are you a good renter? So financial stability. They also look at what you have at cash reserves. And what is recommended is at least six months worth of cash reserves, either in your checking or your savings account. Start committing yourself. Because if you want the dream, you're going to have to show the bank that you are serious and you can make a financial commitment to your future. And that way, when they invest in you, uh, they they have some proof that you're gonna you're gonna um, you're gonna hold up to your end of the bargain, and it's really important. Okay, now the next <laughs> the next option, and there are some other options. Uh, say the bank loan you're just batting zero. There is always seller financing. Now, seller financing is a good, viable option. Uh, the unfortunate thing about seller financing is finding a place that is willing to do seller financing. But I have met people who have obtained their homesteads on and off grid through f seller financing. And all that is, is the people that are selling the piece of property or the home, they become the bank. Now, the unfortunate part about that is they have the right to charge you more interest because they're taking a risk. But the good thing is if you have no credit, you don't have to qualify, you don't have to prove anything. If that uh, seller is willing to work with you, there you go. You can move in and you can have your homestead. Now, the other part of the deal is if you don't hand, um, hold up your end of the bargain, you lose the homestead. So for them, for the sellers, uh, they are usually willing to take that risk because their payback is getting back their property in their home. So they're really not out anything. Uh, if you find you are really serious about and you have been dealing with the sellers and you think, you think there may be a little wiggle room to present seller financing options to them, go ahead and do it. You know, you're not gonna be out anything. Um, this is your dream, right? So go for it. Go for it. Okay, and now there's another option. Uh, there's always other options. You know, this is the thing about advocating for your own financial well-being. No one else is going to do it, and no one else is going to tell you the options, right? Okay, but sorry, going to tell you the options. The other option is, ooh, drum roll, cosign, cosign, cosign. Now, this usually means you may have to ask a financially sound family member to co-sign for a loan. And I know, I know this is, this is something that can be very difficult to do. It can uh, be a little stressful if you are married, uh, depending on who decides to be the co-signer from either end of your family. It's kind of a last resort thing, but I am telling you, co-signing is a great viable option and it can hopefully obtain you that loan to get your dream homestead. So don't cross it off your list. I mean, obviously if you're married or you're with a partner, you really have to sit down and think about the co-signing option. And you know, if you're using a family member, you really gotta sit down and figure out how this is going to be done. It really can be a viable option financially. But this is, this is the point where you have to really sit down and look at your own finances, make sure that you are stable, you are ready, and you can put your money where your mouth is because no matter who you go to, be it friend or family, they are going to have a lot of questions, and rightfully so. And this is where the stressful part comes in because they are now going to have the right, your family member, to ask you about your financial stability. They have the right to ask you about your credit cards, your car payment, uh, your how much reserves you have in your checking account. And don't, please, do not be offended because when you are going down this route and this is your only last viable option, you need to plead your case and you need to do it 
respectfully and not take it personally. Because I know if someone came to me and wanted me to co-sign a family member, I'd be asking a lot of questions and I would have my doubts. So just know the position that you may be placed in. But also keep in the back of your mind that you want to obtain that homestead, that, that living dream. These are the hoops that you are going to have to jump through. Hopefully, I have given you enough tips to start researching and start looking into your financial freedom and options when it comes to obtaining a homestead with bad, bad credit or not a lot of money. So don't give up, please don't give up. Uh, you know, what, what really helped us obtain our dream is we didn't give up. A lot of hard work, a lot of persistence, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of hard work. But it got us to this point. And again, we are 100% debt free. Debt free, we own our property and our house and everything. And the only thing that is sure on this homestead is death and taxes. Can't get away from that. But in the meantime, we're living a pretty financial free lifestyle. And you can have it too, so don't forget about that. Okay, God bless, and I hope, I hope this video uh, finds uh, some people who are struggling out there, finds them and gives them some hope.